Great, welcome. I'm Samantha Melbourne Weaver. I'm here at the Orange County Register with a team of reporters who uh, recently completed a big project about all the cannabis laws in California. Uh, with us is reporter Brooke Staggs, uh, data reporter Ian Wheeler, and then developer Phil Lawrence. Um, these three just worked for over a year on a project collecting all of the laws about cannabis, recreational cannabis, medical marijuana, and the state of California. Uh, they put together a three-part series about all the things that that data showed us. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But first, I'm going to have Brooke talk a little bit about um, why you decided to put this whole project together. Thank you. So um, when we voted to legalize uh, recreational cannabis in California back in November 2016, we also voted to let cities make up their own rules about um, whether businesses got to open in their borders and then also uh, how people could grow cannabis at home, since Prop 64 says you can grow up to six plants if you're 21 and older. And so I quickly realized in talking to family and colleagues and, and reading online comments from people that um, most people really had no idea what those rules were. They just assumed after Prop 64 passed that it was kind of a free-for-all. And that's very much not the case. And so I um, wanted to find an easy way for people to go to find that information for the cities where they live and where they work and if they're going to go on vacation somewhere in California. Um, so that was one big reason that I wanted to make it. But also, uh, as a reporter, I found it frustrating that there didn't seem to be anyone tracking this information. So if I wanted to know, um, you know, for context in a story, if a new city approves allowing recreational shops, how many other cities allow them? Is this unusual? Is it becoming common? What is the acceptance like as this spreads across the state? And so for both of those reasons, you know, to have that data for us to use and look back on and then for readers to be able to find it, wanted to build this um, searchable platform for people. Great. So um, if you're just joining us, uh, remember this is a live video, so please leave us your comments if you have any questions about all this crazy cool data. Um, one of the people that kind of collected all this information and put it in a very usable database uh, was Ian Wheeler. Uh, he's our data reporter who uh, kind of collected all the data from various feeds and reporters across the state and kind of put it in, in one place, made a score uh, to, to gauge all the city's acceptance rates. Uh, so talk a little bit about that for us, Ian. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it was absolutely a group effort from reporter, reporters all over the state, um, uh, quite a few in uh, Southern California and uh, several in the Bay Area and, and other, uh, other digital first media properties too, uh, as well as some, uh, some freelancers. Um, so uh, we, we had all this help because uh, collecting data from 482 cities uh, and, uh, and from 50, uh, 58 counties uh, to count unincorporated areas, uh, towns across the state, um, it's, uh, it's a lot of work because these laws vary from place to place. Um, and because of that, because uh, cities can have any variety of yeses and nos uh, up and down the chart, we wanted to, uh, to make it more digestible uh, to understand, so we sort of boiled down uh, the yes, the city does allow medical manufacturing, no, it doesn't allow uh, recreational shops, uh, down to one number out of 100 um, to, uh, to, to make it a little, little more accessible for people. And so a 100 on the scale means that a city is really friendly toward marijuana policies? It does. It, it means uh, permissive, friendly. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, uh, in contrast, zero means that it's very strict, uh, allows as little as it can. Okay. So uh, I'm going to toss it over to Phil, who put together the database and built kind of the, in the interactive that we have on our website. Uh, if you want to go to Orange County Register, or ocregister.com slash we dash laws, laws right. you can see the database. We'll walk, walk you through it in just a minute. But Phil, you, you kind of built the whole page. Talk about what that was like and how you structured it. Yeah, well, there was two developers. So Daniel Aiken built the presentation, which is what you'll see on the website. My part was to build a database. So I took all the data that Ian and the other journalists were gathering, and we had to work together a lot to make sure that you know, they were getting complete sets of data for each city. So my role was to take this data and put it into the database so that it could feed the presentation page. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of coordination up front before we started the project with what they wanted it to show, et cetera. And then we just built a database. Very cool. Uh, so sh we should probably look through the interactive. So we s you're seeing on your screen now uh, kind of the main page. Um, and Brooke will kind of walk through how to, how to use it. So a um, bit of introduction up here, which covers some of the stuff that we've already talked about, why we created it. And if you scroll down you'll start to see the actual database itself pop up. 
Um, one note, it, this works best on Chrome or on Safari. We've heard folks having trouble with uh, using it on Firefox. So if you're not okay. seeing that list of counties pop up, that's one thing to check. It definitely works better on, on some of those other browsers. So um, what it'll do, if you come to it, we've been messing around with it a little bit here, so we have some other counties selected, but if you come to it on the OC register page, it'll automatically have Orange County selected for you, so that means it'll pop up um, the Orange County cities first, but you see you can select um, any number of counties you want, as it explains up at the top there. If you select none of them, it'll show all counties. Um, so you can do comparisons. Um, once you've selected whatever counties you want to look at, um, then you go to if you want to look for particular business types, and if you want to look for only cities that, as you can see, either allow or disallow, so you make that choice first, all of these business types. And again, selecting none will show all of them. So right now I'm looking at Orange County cities that allow all business types. It's going to pull up all the information. Once you've chosen whatever you want, you click Apply Selections. Scroll down. There actually is a list of cities here. If you want to look and click on your individual city, that's one quick way to get to it. And then you can choose to have your results pop up either in uh, order by points, which is what Ian was just going over, the score that we came up with, or um, alphabetically. So uh, right now we're alphabetical, so you, Aliso Viejo coming up first. And so each city has one of these cards, which I believe was Phil's idea. We all talked about different ways to present this, but this is a really great idea Phil had to make it really digestible for you to see all the information about your city in one spot. So um, Ian gathered all of this demographic information you see here, so you can quickly get a sense of you know, the population, how many registered voters. Um, also really interesting is how people voted on Prop 64. So the statewide average was 57%. So you can see here in Aliso Viejo, it was slightly above the state average of approving marijuana legalization. Um, and then whether they've passed an additional tax on marijuana as well. So the state has a 15% tax across the board. But cities can, of course, put in their own taxes. Some cities are doing so if they choose to allow businesses. So that'll be reflected here. And then over here you see um, what, they, what rules they pass for all the different types of businesses and home growth. So as you can see from their score up here in the upper left-hand corner and from all of the X's, Elisa Viejo doesn't allow any businesses of any type. And then when it comes to growing at home, They've passed the strictest rules that they possibly can under state law, which is to block outdoor grows. That's very clearly allowed under Prop 64. And then for indoor grows, they re require folks to get a permit if they want to do that. So if you see one of these little eyes, if you hover over it, it'll pop up more information. So you can see if you want to grow uh, cannabis at home as allowed under Prop 64, you need to pay $345 a year to the city. Um, one of the stories we've done found that in Aliso Viejo and every other city, just about that we've um, talked to in the state that requires permits. No one has yet requested one of those permits. <laughs> so um, you can do your own deduction as to why that might be. But um, so, and that is all reflected in again this score up here. So they have a zero because it's as strict as they can possibly be. Possibly be. Um, but if you wanted to uh, keep scrolling down again, this is in alphabetical order. See, Costa Mesa is one of only um, two cities, or I'm sorry, there's been a couple recent ones passed, actually, so we've done some updating, was for a long time one of only two cities that allowed any businesses in Orange County. Um, so they allow manufacturing and distribution, so their score is a little bit higher. Um, Cypress is one of the new ones that's voted to add, or I'm sorry, they just have more permissive home grow policy. <laughs> Same with Dana Point. And then we go all the way down to the bottom, and then you can see an example of our only city in the county that allows shops. So Santa Ana has the highest score in Orange County right now because they allow both recreational and medical shops. Um, but you can see they still aren't anywhere close really to having 100 points because they don't allow any other types of businesses. Um, so that's kind of the range of things we're seeing um, and that's how to, to use the, the database to look up the information for your own city. So if you were um, uh, somebody that wants to open a business in you know, a certain county or something like that, you could leave all counties unselected and then come down and say you want to open um, medical commercial grow, apply that selection, and then it's going to pull up. We have this handy count. This is actually a feature we just added, which I'm excited about. <laughs> it counts up for you how many results. So you know there are 115 cities in the state Actually, that's cities and counties, we should specify, because we have both in here. Places, places. Places, <laughs> right, right. 115 out of 
339, because that's San Francisco is a city and a county. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that allow um, the medical growth. So if you again, if you were interested in opening that type of business, you could use this to find where could I, you know, legally do this under their policies. So it's again something hopefully that's useful. And if you say wanted to go on vacation in one of these cities, again, say you can, you know, select what county you're going to, and then search for, you know, ones that allow recreational sales. That's where you only need a ID to be 21 and older, and then you can find um, the cities that allow, and in this case, you are out of luck if you are going on vacation in <laughs> San Luis Obispo County because nothing is coming up is allowing that. So um, those are so, just some different ways that you can use the data. Can you show how to get there again, I'll type? Yeah. Sure. And so, um, so if you're just joining us, we are looking at this database of uh, cannabis laws in the state of California. Um, we, you can get there by going to ocregister.com. Uh, that's our home page. Read about this La Habra development. Uh, OCregister.com slash weed dash laws. Mm -hmm. And that will take you to this database put together by uh, the team that we have here on this video. Brooks Staggs, Ian Wheeler, Phil Lawrence, uh, plus Daniel Aiken, who's not in, in the room today. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just a database of all the various uh, marijuana laws in the cities in California. And uh, we have more to show you, actually. Yeah. I'm trying to signal our cameraman. Um, there's more on the, yeah. on the regular screen about uh, some, some interactive graphics just to kind of look at the statewide trends in marijuana laws. Uh, Ian's going to kind of walk us through and that. And can I mention really quick, too, that the, the, the location for it, it's on all of our Southern California News Group websites. Yes. So if you live in L.A. and you go to dailynews.com, I'm hoping you do, forward slash weed laws will take you there. If you're in the Inland Empire, pe.com forward slash weed laws. Also, we have an entire website dedicated to cannabis coverage, the Californian, which you know has been instrumental in, in moving this forward and kind of getting the whole state united on doing this. And so if you go to the Californian.com, C-A-N-N-I-F-O-R-N-I-A-N, -N -N, um, it's one of the top options that'll pop up. You'll see searchable database. And we'll drop a link into the, to the video comments so you can see that. So, uh, so here I've selected uh, sort of our, our four um, greater Los Angeles counties, uh, Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Um, and I've gone to, uh, to filter out each, uh, every city that allows recreational shops. Um, and you can see that it's, uh, it's 14 places uh, across the, the LA region. Um, so uh, so one, one thing we wanted to do is because um, recreational shops are, were the central idea uh, of Prop 64, um, I, I think that's what most people thought of when, uh, when they were voting yes or no uh, on the initiative in 2016. Uh, we made that uh, heavily weighted uh, in the score. In fact, um, no, uh, no city uh, that, uh, oops, someone <laughs> popped in. Uh, so, so if a city allows recreational shops, uh, it basically can't be beat uh, in score uh, by other cities. So even if an, another city has or allows every other type uh, of uh, marijuana-related business, allows uh, indoor, outdoor home grows. Uh, a city that only allows uh, rec shops uh, will still beat it. Because um, that, that, that was really a major tenet of the prop. And then Ian uh, created some really cool interactive graphics that showed people how this all comes together, gives you cool ways to compare um, how this, how people voted on Prop 64 versus what the rules look like in their cities. And, and those, those are a little, uh, a little lower. But um, if, uh, if any of these, uh, any of these terms uh, confuse you, there's a very uh, simple glossary of terms here to, to help you understand exactly uh, what kinds of uh, uh, businesses we're talking about. Um, there are things broken out like recreational testing is distinct from medical distribution. Um, so, uh, so that can be found right below. Uh, the card portion of the database, we explain a little bit about the project before we get to these interactives. So th this is a cool one because um, it, uh, it helps you sort of get a grasp of what areas of the state, first of all, uh, passed and failed Prop 64. Um, so this is showing the local vote uh, for each city. Uh, unincorporated county areas are not shown here. Um, but, uh, but you can sort of see that it, it, was, uh, it was more popular in some areas than others. Uh, 
One place where it wasn't so popular, it seems, was the farming communities of the Central uh, Valley, as, uh, as well as some places in uh, Northern California, uh, and a lot of cities sort of uh, on the periphery of Central Los Angeles uh, in Southern California. So, uh, so if we zoom in a bit, we can see that a little more clearly. Again, you can filter here uh, by clicking pass or fail. So you can see where or which cities uh, passed um, Prop 64 with the majority of the vote. You can see that uh, Los Angeles uh, voters voted yes to pass it. 65% uh, voted yes. Um, and that, uh, that is reflective of uh, its database score of uh, 96.8 out of 100. So it's considered by us to be very permissive. Um, deselecting that, you can also uh, you can also see which cities are are very permissive, very strict, strict, moderate. Um, these are broken out into uh, they they go by groups of twenty. So cities with zero to twenty points are considered to be very strict because they're on that low end of the scale. Uh, conversely, uh, cities that are very uh, permissive have 80 to 100 points. Um, so you can filter that and see that there are much fewer of those uh, in Southern California. Uh, Culver City, Los Angeles, uh, we have Bellflower in there. And then uh, a couple of cities in the Coachella Valley, uh, Palm Desert, Cathedral City, and Palm Springs. Uh, I don't believe we have any in Orange County. Uh, Santa Ana is the, uh, is the highest that still falls into the permissive Category was 75.5, right? 75.5? I believe so. Um, what you can also do here is uh, see which cities allow at least one type, every type, or no types of uh, either recreational or medical businesses. And uh, of course, you can find your city. Um, so let's say I'm looking for Apple Valley. With 51% uh, with of the vote there, Prop 64 passed, although the database score is zero out of 100, so that city's very strict. Uh, almost nothing's allowed there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so in addition to all the databases that you built and all the uh, interactives that you built, there was a lot of data that you, you sifted through and a lot of things that you learned about just generally the marijuana permissiveness of the state, uh, including that only 144 out of 482 cities, municipalities, counties uh, allow cannabis businesses. We kind of see that in the data. Um, one in five cities allow dispensaries. That's the general number. And one in seven allow recreational stores. What else did you come across that was really interesting or that you know, our viewers should know? And if you're watching this live, please uh, join us in the comments section and ask us you know, to explain further or, or show anything more. We're, we're here live, so ask us your questions. But if you could go over some, some cool things that you found in this project. Um, well, I was really surprised, actually, by how few cities. I knew it was going to be less than 50%, definitely. But it's fewer than one in three that allow any type of business. So. That was lower than I anticipated being. Counties are slightly more permissive in their policies for unincorporated areas, um, 18 out of 58 that allow some types, so that was interesting. Um, Riverside County has by far the most number of permissive cities in the entire state, which is interesting. I mean, there are smaller counties, so they have a little bit of an advantage that they have a good number of cities, but um, you saw, as, as Ian demonstrated on that map, the Coachella Valley area has really embraced this industry in a big way. Um, Palm Springs is one of the only, one of what, as far as I know, four cities in the state that are going to allow cannabis lounges where people can consume on site, um, along with West Hollywood and SoCal, and then Oakland and San Francisco, and then Northern California, so that was interesting. Um, Ian and I had talked about, we were really surprised at Humboldt County. Everyone knows it as being just, you know, the hotbed of cannabis activity, <coughs> but actually four out of seven cities in Humboldt have a zero on our score, so it's kind of this thing where the county itself and some of the cities there are, you know, the county in particular is very liberal, mm -hmm. and then some of the communities that are within that county are as strict as they can be. Um, and then we also dug into, along with just kind of looking at those big, you know, numbers for businesses and stuff, we dug into the rules for growing at home. And so, again, state law says you can grow six plants 
cities can clearly ban outdoor rowing, and then they can reasonably regulate further. And what, you know, what reasonable means is up for debate. There's actually a lawsuit pending over this right now in the city of Fontana. Um, some cities have uh, gone so far as to require permits, as we showed some examples of that. And those um, can require people to let police come into their home and inspect you know, things there. They can pay fees as high as $1,420 is the highest we found. Um, and that was a discovery I think Ian made as he was inputting that data. He messaged me like, whoa, 1420 Some people asked 420 too. I mean, tomorrow is 420 Seems like a coincidence. The city told me that's the fee they calculated. I was going to ask. Sure. Sorry, I saw more than $420 per yeah. year. Yes. Yes. Someone's yeah. having some fun. I, mean, so yeah. I, I wondered if that was a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> so it, but we can say, you know, with this database concretely, one in seven cities require you get a permit to grow at home. And, you know, again, that's something being contested in court right now. Um, and then also the taxes. This is interesting. So while 72 cities, um, or I'm sorry, while more than half of cities welcome the industry so far, or I'm saying this backwards, more than half of the cities that welcome the industry so far haven't added any local taxes. Okay. And that surprised us because we kind of assumed, I mean, if you're going to do this, you're going to want to make money off of it. And so right. we've heard from some cities that, you know, it, it's, it's an expensive process to get a ballot on, you know, through an election. It takes time. So some, it's clearly just hasn't happened yet. There are quite a few that are going to have ballot measures on this June or November. Um, but there are other cities that are ditching that and going with development fees. They say they never plan to do a tax. And some people have said... You know, is that like an end run around um, Prop 218 that makes you get voter approval for taxes? Riverside County recently opted to go this route. So, um, you know, these are, again, just stats that we didn't really have any concept of before we looked at this. I would have assumed that almost every city that allowed businesses had a tax in place, and that's not the case. So, Yeah, I think yeah. voters kind of thought this was going to be a huge boon for the state right. when it came to taxes, right? What were, do you remember the, what the projections were? I mean, a billion dollars for state taxes once everything is up and done. And we'll get early um, state tax revenue numbers next month. But so far, some early projections we've seen from some data firms are that it's lower than expected. And, and part of that, I think, is it's still obviously being rolled out. Some of the big cities like L.A. have had a backlog of applications. And Humboldt, they can't process their cultivation permits as fast as they're getting them. So. Wow. You know, I, those numbers are definitely going to go up, and I'm sure um, that the numbers of cities that allow these businesses are going to go up as well. I mean, we had, we've had Jeff Sessions being very harsh on cannabis, and I think that scared some cities away that were maybe considering it. But then last month, you guys probably saw Trump surprised everyone by telling this Colorado senator that he was going to back um, state marijuana rights. And so maybe that's going, we've seen the stocks go up a little bit already, mm -hmm. wondering if that's maybe going to, you know, have some cities start embracing it more. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's still very new. Prop 64 is passed November of 2016. Mm -hmm. Recreational marijuana became legal, fully legal January 1st of this year. Right, so, so we're very early in the process yeah. still. Uh, which brings me to my next thing. Tell us about how you're going to kind of develop this project. It, like I said, it's a very new thing in our state to have recreational marijuana. Tell us about just your plans for the future with this whole cannabis database and, and the project and what other stories you expect to get from it. Well, uh, there's, there's a huge number of stories that, uh, that this, uh, we, we find just every time we look at it, uh, so a, a new way to, uh, to digest this information. Um, and it's, uh, it's an ongoing project because uh, cities can change uh, their, you know, day to day, um, anything can change in a city somewhere in California. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's a little tough to stay on top of too. Um, it's, uh, and it's something we, we hope can be a resource for, uh, for readers, um, hopefully for the foreseeable future. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes on, uh, on the goings on uh, all across the state and make sure we're not uh, missing anything. I was say, I think Phil had ideas about a way to incorporate some new stuff down the road, right? Well, I, I mean, I th think maybe unintended or intended consequences of what this legalization has done, we might want to track additional statistics mm -hmm. or additional, not or maybe whether it's crime or not to imply that it's going to rise crime, <laughs> but uh, or social welfare or, or other statistics we haven't even considered yet that might be brought to bear. So we might expand to include those statistics. And then the other part would be, like you, you, you alluded to, is other ways to use technology to parse the data mm -hmm. to, to learn about what's really happening. Yeah. And so uh, who do you envision using this, this database and these, and these tools? Obviously people who want to start businesses, um, people who partake and want to know where they can go and where they can grow their own plants and where they should move, but probably also people who are really against that. They kind of 
Right, yeah, and that's what, I mean, we've talked about, our score is zero to 100, but that we don't mean to imply that 100 is better, right? Depending on how you view <laughs> cannabis, zero might be the best for you, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it can be used on both sides of the spectrum. And I mean, I've heard from um, quite a few people that work for cities and state and the state that are using this now, because again, it, the information didn't exist anywhere else. They're, you know, this is evolving so fast, they're having to make up these policies too, and they don't have good reference points for, well, what are other cities doing? So. You know, I've gotten requests from them, like for this. When is it going to be ready? You know, they they sent us their information, and then they wanted to be able to see how it all came down, so that they can use it to help develop their own policies. And I mean, as Phil mentioned, like tracking something like crime, you know, it's important that we do that, even if nothing changes, because that alone is really useful information mm -hmm. that it's hard to find right now. Because, again, because cannabis is federally illegal, research is difficult. You know, there aren't that many states, and there's nine now that allow recreational. Um, but only um, eight of those allow businesses. So, right. you know, it's a small number. So having that to be able to say five years from now, crime did not go up in any of the cities that allow it, or it did increase faster than the average rate. You know, that's information that people want to know as other states are looking to legalize, or even countries. You know, I've, I actually got a request from a, a reporter in Australia the other day that <laughs> saw it and said, you know, our country is looking at this, and we want to wow. know how it's all playing out. So. I think it'll be really useful for, our, for a lot of folks. Yeah, there's, there's certainly a lot more to come. Um, on that note, I think, uh, unless you guys have anything else you want to add, I will say goodbye uh, again. Uh, I'm Samantha Melbourne Weaver. This is Ian Wheeler, Brooks Staggs, Phil Lawrence. Uh, they just recently completed our uh, marijuana database project. And um, we invite you to check it out at ocregister.com slash weed dash laws. Um, and with that, we will say goodbye. Happy Thursday, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.